Nikon just announced a major firmware update 3.0 for the Nikon Z9, a camera that was announced literally a year ago today. Does this update offer major enhancements and dozens of updates over firmware 2.0? Or is this just one of those massive maintenance updates that fixes bugs that none of us have ever even heard of? Details coming up, but first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Nikon just released firmware 3.0 for the Nikon Z9. That's one year after the announcement of the camera and about six months after firmware 2.0. Firmware 2.0 brought major enhancements and added new capabilities while also fixing numerous bugs. Major updates included bringing Apple ProRes to video modes, and as the update number would imply, is 3.0 an equally big update to firmware 2.0? Nikon has joined a rather small club, a club of camera makers that continues to support their cameras long after they were released. And when I mean support, I'm not talking about a warranty. I'm not talking about giving you a phone number where you can call and ask questions or an email address or even chatting to a bot. I'm talking about new enhancements, new capabilities to their cameras long after they were released. This started with Lumix, constantly providing incredible video capabilities to their cameras long after the cameras were released, sometimes two, three, four, and even five years. Then Canon in 2020 announced the Canon EOS R5 and the R6. The R5 has received something like 10 firmware updates, bringing major enhancements to video and stills capabilities, as well as the autofocus system. And now Nikon with firmware 3.0 shows that it's willing to do the same for their high-end cameras, and deliver on their commitment to their customers. Firmware 3.0 is a massive update bringing over 50 new capabilities. And according to Nikon's executive vice president, Firmware 3.0 not only demonstrates Nikon's commitment to addressing our customers' needs, but also our continued support to update our products to their full potential for the benefit of our users. This slide released by Nikon shows some of the major capabilities to their over 20 video and photography features included in this enhancement. And one of those, which is kind of cryptic here, it says high res zoom for 4K video. And what we're really simulating here is parfocal zooming. So you can zoom in without having to touch the lens without any breathing at all. So talk about focus compensation. This is a really big deal. We also have high speed frame capture at 60 frames per second, giving you around 19 megapixels, improved autofocus tracking, Bluetooth time code capability, and many, many other, including high frequency flicker reduction that we saw in stills now being brought to video. So let's first of all talk about that capability right at the top of the list, high res zooming in 4K. It's rather cryptic. And the reason for that is they can't say it's parfocal zooming because it's not. To get lenses that offer parfocal zooming are very expensive. One nice thing about them is they completely eliminate focus breathing and you can constantly zoom from close to far or back and forth without ever losing focus. And that's a really big deal. But how does it work on the Nikon Z9 with firmware 3.0? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see what happens is it starts off with full sensor readout 8.3K over sample 4K. And as you start to zoom in, what it does is eventually zooms in and moves down to APS-C mode where you get a super 35 or 1.5 times crop. I don't know what the level of detail is going to be because I haven't had a chance to try this out but this can be really exciting. Now, while I don't plan on losing all my detail by going and zooming in really, really far, but to be able to zoom in just a little bit and not at all lose focus, not have any focus breathing, talk about breathing compensation as a capability. Nikon's gone all out on this, and I think this far exceeds any sort of breathing compensation capability that we see in some of the competitors' cameras. Sony? We currently have C30 mode and C120 mode, and what C60 mode is gives us the ability, as the name would imply, 60 frames per second at 19 megapixels. Now this is pretty consistent to what other previous high level flagship camera operators or owners have had in the past where we see the Canon 1DX Mark III, the Nikon D6, all these cameras were right around that 20 to 24 megapixels. So to be able to shoot 60 frames per second at 19 megapixels is certainly very impressive. Both Sony and Canon arguably by most standards have the best autofocus systems out there with Nikon, a close second. Nikon produces a very good autofocus system, but it's still behind those other camera companies. While firmware 3.0 offered several enhancements to the autofocus system across many different areas. One is low light performance, gaining an extra half stop. And in terms of tracking animals and other fast moving subjects, well, the autofocus system has gotten a little bit more accurate. So major updates to the autofocus system 
But that first update that I talked about where it simulates parfocal zooming is really a focus capability because what it does is it allows you to zoom in ever so slightly or by a large amount without having to worry about focus breathing compensation or without losing focus in any way whatsoever. That's a really big deal. And if you're shooting manual or autofocus, this is a huge step up. So I would say that firmware 3.0 is really all about autofocus improvements. So we've got that par focal zooming, we've got a half stop of low light performance, and we've got better subject and object tracking, a really huge update for autofocus. Just a few moments ago, when I was talking about high frequency flicker reduction, you might've just said, well, wait a minute, we got that already in firmware 2 or 2.1. And you'd be correct, but that was for the still side of things for photography. Well, now in firmware 3.0, we've also got it for the video side of things. So a really, really big update. I think Nikon's got a great camera with the Nikon Z9 when it was announced back, and I think it was October the 28th or the 27th. And today is the 26th, if my, I can't really see with my glasses. Yep, the 26th. Well, of course it's the 26th. This is when Sony, in about six hours from now, is gonna be announcing their new camera, the A7R5. So I'll be covering that when that comes out. And this video might actually come out before that, depending on how much time, because once I finish shooting this, I'm going back to bed, and then because I've got a busy day ahead. But the firmware 3.0 for the Nikon Z9, it, it's done an incredible job for the, the Z9. I'm really happy to see camera companies like Canon and Nikon follow in Lumix's steps and providing additional capabilities and enhancements to their cameras, showing their commitment to customers, instead of just going, you know, yeah, here you go, here's your camera, give us your money and buy some lenses and stuff. And outside of that, uh, we don't want to see you again. Don't call into our support center. We're just going to give you canned responses unless you have, unless everybody has a major issue. You know, that kind of, I, I'm not, that's not what it is for me. To me, photography is a special discipline where we need the right support and enhancements to keep us coming back year after year to the platform. And while the current camera that we might be shooting might not be as good as the competition, when we see these camera companies that we own, for it, whether it be Canon, Nikon, or Lumix, and we see them continue to support us and update us, well, we're more likely to stay with that platform into the future. Instead of doing things that are anti-competitive, things that are frustrating to us, things that seem like all they care about is pulling money out of our pockets. So firmware, 3.0 is available for download right now. However, and this is a big however, I highly recommend not downloading it right now, not applying it. Let's wait and see if there are any caveats to this, any issues that pop up. While generally firmware updates go quite well, quite often what we discover is new bugs into the system. And in some cases, you might install a firmware update that can even brick your camera. Do you remember firmware 1.4 for the Canon EOS R6? Canon very quickly pulled that from the market, offering firmware 1.4.1 because, well, essentially it bricked the camera. Now it was a temporary brick. You basically had to pull the battery, wait a little bit, put it back in. Otherwise it was completely unresponsive in certain shooting modes or in certain video modes. So uh, I would recommend waiting a week or two. And if you don't hear anything, if you don't hear anything from this channel about any issues caused by the firmware update, then I wouldn't worry, I'd go ahead and apply it. But this is a major firmware update for the Nikon Z9. And if you're shooting it as a major, as, sorry, if you're shooting this, using this camera for your professional business, I highly recommend waiting at least two weeks before applying the update. But you'll see huge updates in the autofocus system, low light performance, that par focal zooming for video, um, high frequency flicker reduction, Bluetooth, a whole bunch of other things. You can see from this list here, all the capability enhancements to stills photography, where you can adjust the different image sizes. You can add C60, which we already talked about, that high frequency flicker reduction and also focus position for auto reset. And that's another focus shifting capability. And of course, on the video side, we've already talked about some of these. So some extra settings and enhancements in video recording, and also the display, the playback controls. There's so much that's been added to this firmware update. Well, uh, when I said dozens of enhancements and capabilities, I wasn't kidding. Many fixes as well. So we've also got improvements to the network. And of course, look at this, look at all the other changes, a whole list of changes, and of course, they fixed a whole bunch of issues as well. As you can see here, lots that have been fixed in firmware 3.0 for the Nikon Z9. And if you wanna stay up to date on the latest happenings regarding the Nikon Z9, any other firmware updates, or if a firmware update causes any problems, go ahead and subscribe and then choose all notifications. Choosing all notifications is very important because as soon as I release a video like this one here, you'll get notified by YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date 
on the latest camera news and rumors. That saves you from having to scan all the Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, any other feeds that you're subscribed to, as well as all the popular websites and YouTube channels. And I'm not saying you shouldn't follow those, but when time is in a, when you're really busy and you don't have much time, a single source for all major camera news, rumors, and updates is a really huge benefit. So go ahead and subscribe and choose all not, uh, all, not updates, all updates. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Coverage of the Nikon, or not the Nikon, coverage of the Sony a7R5 will begin later today. Um, I believe in about five hours now, we're supposed to get the announcement of the Sony a7R5. We are getting a major new camera or a new camera model at 10 a.m. New York time and Toronto time. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.